Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I wanted to talk about a technique that um, I've never actually discussed before on this channel, which is resampling. What I mean by that is you build an instrument in Contact or SFZ, you take the output of that instrument, you apply some effects, and then you create a new instrument with the result. There's so many different reasons that you might want to do this that it's a little bit hard to even know how to pitch this video. So let me talk about why I'm doing it right now. Uh, I'm in the process of putting together another free sample release. Uh, it's actually a sample of this instrument. It's called a mandolin guitar phone. I'm making another video um, introducing the sample and uh, hopefully I'll release that video before this video and then you'll know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that instrument sounds like this. You know, it's kind of like a niche novelty instrument. What I did is I took those individual samples that I recorded and I looped them um, so that they would uh, go on forever. And then I layered them all on top of each other. So instead of getting a single key, you're getting all of the keys. So obviously some of them are pitch bent down, some of them are pitch bent up. Specifically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make like a kind of swarm style instrument. So here's what my swarm sounds like. So pretty cool, right? So my problem right now is here I have built this um, kind of cool sounding uh, patch in contact and I'm trying to make an SFZ version and SFZ does not have the same effects. So what I need to do is I need to take the output that I'm getting from contact. Basically, I need to resample it. Okay, so let's quit out of contact. So what I'm gonna use is a program called Auto Sampler. Uh, Auto Sampler was actually developed by an independent company. I can't even remember the name of the company. Uh, the company was bought out by Apple and then incorporated into a piece of software that actually not that many people know about called MainStage. MainStage is kind of like a sister program to, to Logic. It uses the same uh, sound formats, uh, a lot of the same stuff. Essentially, the, the deal with MainStage is this is supposed to be like an app that you run if you're actually using your Mac as a performance device. So uh, it's got all your patches in it and you can switch back and forth between the patches really quickly uh, using like a foot pedal controller. It's a very, very niche app. It's kind of almost surprising that Apple um, keeps developing it. Now the thing is, I don't care about live performance at all, but MainStage also includes this really amazing piece of software called Auto Sampler. The reason it includes it is the idea is that you would take like your outboard modules, like maybe you've got some MIDI module that you don't want to bring with you on stage. You record your patches using Auto Sampler, and then they become EXS patches that can be used by MainStage or actually Logic for that matter. So when you open up MainStage, uh, it gives you this weird uh, window. Uh, I always choose keyboard and then I always regret it because it basically sets up a bunch of uh, demo patches, which I absolutely hate. It's like the most annoying thing ever, um, but I basically don't know what else to, to choose. So uh, you'll see what I mean in just a second. Okay, so this is the performance view. We don't care about that. That's like for live performers. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna delete basically all of the demo patches. And there it is, deleting everything that it's set up. I don't know why they think you want it preloaded with so many patches. It's very, very annoying. Uh, as you can see, it actually comes preloaded with a bunch of reverbs. I think we're gonna just delete them because I'm not gonna use those. And now we're going to create a new patch and I'm gonna call it Mandolin Guitarophone Hammer Swarm. I'm gonna make the window a little bit smaller. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click and do add instrument channel strip. It's a lot like logic. It borrows a lot of the same UI concepts uh, in instrument. I'm going to do contact and I'm going to drag my contact patch, the one I was just playing uh, in. And I'm going to make sure reverb is turned all the way down because I don't want to actually record the reverb. Uh, then I'm just going to hit a few keys. Okay, sounds exactly the way we want it to. Now I'm going to close this. Okay, so now's the part where we actually do the resampling. So we go to audio effects. We go all the way down to main stage. Now this audio sampler feature is actually kind of like a, a plugin. It's not an audio unit plugin. It's like a plugin that's built into main stage. Uh, we're gonna go down here to utility, audio sampler, stereo. And it's gonna pop up this kind of unique UI, which basically has configuration options um, for uh, what our new sample is going to look like. So, so let's drag this all the way up. We want the ranges to match. 
Okay, so let's go through these parameters. This is obviously the note range. Um, sample every is basically how often it gets sampled. You could sample it every semitone, you could sample it every three semitones. Basically anything that you don't sample is gonna be pitch bend one way or the other. Round robin is basically whether or not it contains round robins. Uh, if your sample contains round robins, it will hit the note multiple times um, to get different results uh, and then put those into an EXS with the round robins turned on. It's pretty fancy. Sustain is how long it records for. Velocity layers is um, what it sounds like. It's basically like uh, if you have multiple velocity layers, which in this case we don't, but very often you do, uh, you can say, oh, this has three velocity layers and you can actually even set the specific points at which um, the sample changes uh, so it matches up with the internal logic of the instrument. You can also specify how the velocity is distributed, uh, if they're logarithmic, exponential, or yeah, custom using you know whatever stop points you want. In this case, we don't have multiple velocity layers. One of the great things about AutoSampler uh, is that it actually tries to find the loop point of uh, the samples that it creates. I generally like to make the sustain pretty long. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna say 10 seconds. Uh, we don't need 10 seconds. The sample itself is like two seconds uh, looping. But with all the effects of applied, uh, there are a lot of things that could potentially kind of muddy the waters and actually make it pretty hard to do looping on this sample. In general, uh, I do search with crossfade, except I'm going to be making uh, SFZ and SFZ does not have crossfading. So I'm gonna do regular search and hope that it is able to find loop points. This is basically what part of the sample is fair game for looping. So uh, from 40% to 90%. So like this middle chunk of the sample is going to be looked at um, to try to find uh, loop points. I'm actually going to say from 20% to 100%. I think that's, um, you know, fair game for uh, finding the loop points. Okay, I think that's it. Let's uh, hit sample. And as you'll see, it is dot exs that is the most annoying thing about auto sampler it creates exs files um, nothing against exs it's just that you really can only use them within logic or main stage obviously i'm trying to make samples that are a little bit more portable so i'm going to need to convert this from exs to something else okay i'm going to hit start and off it goes so yeah it's going to basically hold the note for 10 seconds you see that little blue thing that shows up? That is the loop that it was able to isolate. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera off. This is obviously like a time consuming process. At least it has the decency uh, to tell us that it's gonna be four minutes. Okay, see you in uh, four minutes. Okay. We're back. Now, one wonderful thing about this technique is uh, we're not actually just limited to sampling contact. We can pretty much do anything. We can make a full effects chain here. So uh, I'm going to uh, duplicate this instrument and I'm gonna play with some um, effects that aren't really available to me um, as a contact instrument creator. Um, make a new version that is like an effects version. Uh, and I'm gonna go down here to audio effects and I'm gonna actually pull in Valhalla Shimmer. Uh, if you don't know what Valhalla Shimmer is, it's this amazing plugin that does this kind of weird uh, reverb and pitch shifting. It just always sounds interesting and good. I, I, I love working with it. I'm gonna play some notes. So I don't have a lot of time. I'm just gonna kind of try out some presets. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, let's try black hole. I think that's the one. Okay, so uh, one thing I kind of want to do is I want to uh, pull down um, the high end of that because it's a little bit harsh because of the metallic hammers on the, the guitar phone. Uh, I'm going to use ZQ, which is a Sound Toys EQ, and I like it because you can't futz with it too much. Okay, 
let's uh, let's sample it. Uh, so one thing to remember is auto sampler is basically going to capture anything that comes before it. Uh, so you want to make sure that auto sampler is the last thing in the effects chain, obviously. Uh, let us open it back up. And I think we can pretty much keep the same specs. Um, yeah, let's do it. I'm going to call this one uh, Shimmer Black Hole. Okay, seven minutes. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off um, to you guys in seven minutes. Hey again. Um, so seven minutes have passed. I'm older and wiser, and I have, um, I guess, two EXS samples. I haven't checked them out yet. Uh, let's take a look. Um, and I'm going to make basically a new patch. Uh, but instead of uh, loading up contact the way I did before, I'm actually going to load up EXS. Uh, and um, pull in the sample that we just made. So we hit edit, we go to instrument menu, we do open, and I'm going to find my beautiful Okay, so we've confirmed, we did successfully make a sample. Uh, so now I'm gonna drop down to uh, the finder and we're gonna embark on the long journey that is uh, taking these EXS samples and converting them into SFZ and contact libraries. So here they are, uh, as you can see, um, they do not include the samples. The samples have actually been placed um, somewhere else and if memory serves, it's in like the music directory, something like that. You go to uh, your user directory, um, music, audio music apps, samples, auto sampled. Ah, here we go. Uh, and these are the samples we want. As you can see, they're AIF files. They've been labeled uh, according to velocity and note name, uh, which is pretty useful. You can basically just pull them into contact at this point. Uh, I'm going to use a, a program called um, Chicken Systems Translator. It's a legacy program. Um, under the hood, it's an amazing piece of software. It can convert like a million different formats of samples, but the UI is just really difficult. Um, okay. So here we've got Translator open and you're going to get to see its uh, UI and appreciate some of its quirks. Uh, okay. So going into uh, SFZ files, and here we have uh, Hammerswarm 3, which is actually an EXS patch. And what you do is you choose the EXS patch, and every single time I have to kind of relearn this because it's, it's really not intuitive. I believe that it's you choose it on the left side, and then you hit translate up here, and that's actually a button, even though it looks like a tab. Nope, that didn't do it. Uh, Nobody knows how this thing works. Okay, I'm going to click this, and now I hit translate, and that's a button. Okay, that's that's encouraging. And as you can see, you can choose your output format, um, like Ableton Sampler, for example, uh, which would be nice to have. But right now, uh, I'm going to output it as an SFZ, which is labeled as uh, Cakewalk SFZ, because a, a lot of people don't know it, but um, that's where SFZ originated from. I'm going to leave everything set to its default, uh, and then I'm going to click OK. And it's doing something. Open and closing folder. Okay, here's the output and, and here is the SFZ that it created. So let's take a look. I'm gonna take that SFZ and I'm gonna drop it on Sforzando. Ah, right, loop crossfade. Okay, so there are some opcodes that are not supported. So we'll just get rid of those. And let's try that again. Okay, so now we have a, a workable SFZ file. Our next order of business is to take that SFZ and bring it into contact. So go out of this and now I'm going to open up contact. A lot of people don't know this, but 
Contact actually can read SFC files. Contact 6 can't, but Contact 5 can. Uh, the trick about reading SFC files in Contact is you can't do load and load an SFC file. You have to use the browser on the left-hand side. Um, very strange situation. I don't know why they did it that way, but anyway, you can pull it in like that. And lo and behold, you have a brand new contact instrument based on your SFZ. But yeah, there we go. We've made an SFZ file, we've made um, a contact file, and all using an effect that isn't actually available within contact, isn't available within SFC, um, all through the magic of resampling. By the way, this technique, obviously you could just do this in your um, DAW. You could just uh, lay out all of the different samples and do effects on them. I like using the auto sampler because it just takes a lot less time than doing that. So here are the limitations. Main stage is only available for Mac. Um, there are programs for Windows that do this. Um, there's, a, there's a program called Sample Robot, which I used when it was like version three, like a million years ago, and I thought it was amazing. Um, there even is a, a free one kicking around. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, there are options for Windows to do basically the same kind of thing. I haven't found anything that actually lets you load in effects the way MainStage does, but I bet that there is something like that. Probably you could set up a Reaper script that would do it, and that would be at least cross-platform. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's it. Uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, resampling is a super powerful technique. As I said up top, there are a ton of different reasons why you might want to do this. Um, not just that you're trying to make SFZ instruments, but um, you know the ability to combine instruments, the ability to apply effects that aren't available in contact. Um, yeah, really versatile technique. The sample that I made in this video is available as part of the mandolin guitar phone uh, sample pack. It's free, the link is below. Uh, if you like this video and you have not yet subscribed to this channel, I highly recommend it. It's by far the best way to be notified when I make new free samples and uh, new videos. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Take care.